What's good everybody, Romero17 here, and today I'm happy to bring you guys Counter Striking Volume 1 for UFC 5. So, before we go over to the counters, we need to learn all the defensive maneuvers in UFC 5 in order to hit these set counters. First up, we're going to have the minor lunges. You use the left analog stick, and that's going to help you use the minor lunges, and we're going to get into how those work for counters. Major lunges are done with L1 and the right stick. You don't want to use the left analog stick for fighters who do not have signature lunges. Head movement is done using the right analog stick and there's minor slips and major slips which you guys are going to see in head movement 101 if you guys haven't already checked it out. So let's get into some counter striking on UFC 5. The big thing with the counter striking on UFC 5 is the addition to these icons right so these are going to affect the counters that you guys are going to want to use with your fighters the higher the move level the more damage you're going to deal straight shots for example they cause damage to the nose and when you get damage to the nose it leads to increased damage and the short-term stand recovery is affected in between exchanges round strikes have more of a tendency to kind of bring up a doctor stoppage and they also do a little bit more damage once you open up a cut on your opponent's face so pay attention to the icon when you're going against your opponents or just the facial damage so we're going to move into the sidestep counters you flick up or down with the left stick and this is going to help you evade linear or straight shots there's a lot of options and based on your move list whatever is a higher move level that's probably what you're going to want to go with so we have options like the uppercut input we have the hook input Ideally, you're always going to want to look for the move that does the most damage for your fighter, but also, depending on where you've done, the most damage to your opponent. So, body shot counters are also available off of the sidestep counters. This is going to help with draining your opponent's stamina, especially in between rounds, with how the stamina is working now, and just dealing a lot more damage to the body, which is going to help you get better at counter shots and winning your fights. Off of the sidestep, Shots such as the body teeth, which is a very popular strike in UFC 3 and 4. You can sidestep these strikes and you can counter with a head kick. And the head kick counter is probably one of the most devastating counters you can use against the body teeth. But you also have overhands available too. But depending on your stance, some head kicks work better than others. If you guys are in open stance, the rear head kick might work better than if trying to go for the lead head kick. Up next, we're going to have overhand counters. The overhand input is another solid counter that you guys can land off of the sidestep against linear strikes, especially such as front kicks and body teeps. And the lead overhand is also a very viable counter now. And of course, just like in UFC 3 and in UFC 4, if your opponent tries to throw a spinning sidekick or anything that's a sidekick related move, you can sidestep it. So we're going to move on to backstep counters. This is a very underutilized counter that people do not use. This interrupts combos very well when you backstep the correct strike. It's very important that you do not hold block when you're trying to go with the backstep counter flicking back with the left analog stick. This is best against hooks and uppercuts. It's the best thing that you can use to interrupt your opponent. You create a little bit of space and you can land some devastating counters. Note, this does have a weakness against straight punches, linear shots, and even head kicks as well. So if you're going against somebody who's, say, throwing double jab, cross lead hook, you don't want to try to backstep after the double jab. You want to backstep after the cross. This is also risky against four-piece head kick combinations too if you're standing directly right in front of your opponent. So your best option is to retreat holding the block button and then backstep once you're at the end of their range. The timing is very tricky, but once you get the hand of it, you can land some devastating counters. Now, if you're going to try to use lunges to get away from your opponent, understand that there's a whole bunch of combinations that your opponent can throw at you. You're never always going to know one. But if your opponent has a pattern, for example, if he's throwing the double jab into the cross and you lunge to the outside of the rear hand, nothing can track you after that point, right? If he tries to follow up with a head kick, it's not going to land. He tries to throw a body kick, it's not going to land. You can also lunge away from head kicks as well. And if you find yourself a little bit too close for comfort, you can fire off an overhand instead. So against an oblique kick, if you go back L1 and flick back with the right stick, even though Robert Whitaker is inputting block after this oblique kick, he will be unable to block it as long as you input the lead head kick immediately after you input L1 and right stick back against the oblique kick. Very cheeky counter. You can land question mark kicks too. So hidden tip when it comes to spins. Lunging towards the rear leg avoids spins. So if you're worried about the body spinning kick, spinning heel kick mix up, that kills that. 
If your opponent is throwing body psychics at you, you can sidestep and use this opportunity to land to the body, sap away with their stamina, and potentially get a body rock. So by now we're pretty familiar with the pull counter and how to do the pull counter. You're holding your right analog stick away from your opposition and you'll trigger that animation. And we have a lot of options there to counter with. We have the cross counter. We also have the lead hook counter. We're also going to have the rear hook counter. We also gonna have uppercuts and we can also have overhands in there too. Also, with the addition of the new check hook animation, if you hold the left stick towards the lead leg side, you get this nice check hook animation. So, please remember something, check your move list for the fighter that you're using. Depending on how high the move level is for that fighter, that move might be their best move and has the best chance to opening up a cut on their face or busting their nose or doing whatever you can to get the best rock or drop possible. So keep that in mind when you're picking your fighters for whatever counters that you would like to hit. So the cross counter tends to be the best at the end of punching range. Not only that, but the pull back cross counter has a really good chance of busting up your opponent's nose. Of course with pull counters, and especially since UFC 4, players tend to pull on pull. The overhand is a good counter off your own pull to stop that. The lead hook input is another good strike. That's the new animation right there with uh, this new model of Conor McGregor. And the lead hook input. Remember, these are all one shot counters. The lead hook input is a little bit safer, has less commitment than say the rear uppercut counter, although the rear uppercut counter does a little bit more damage. So keep that in mind when you're picking what strike you're going to go for. Of course, the higher the move level, the better. You can combo the check hook off of your pull counters, right? So I input the left analog stick going down towards my lead leg, and I input the lead hook. And I can combo this with whatever combo I have in my move list. Note that not everybody has this check hook animation. It comes down to either move level or if it's been assigned to them. So hopefully the fighter that you like has that check hook. Another option, the famous one, the pull counter. Pull counter has a really good chance of busting up the nose of your opponents with the rear uppercut. So now we have duck counters and now since taller fighters have been buffed, duck counters are going to be really important for shorter fighters. You're going to be holding right stick forward towards your opponent duck counters are really solid especially ducking uppercuts and ducking rear hooks because you really don't want to stay at the end of the range of a taller fighter now when it comes to practicing your counters make sure that you're having the ai hold block right after because that will let you know if you're timing your counters correctly if the ai is able to successfully block after the whiff that means you mistimed your counter and it's not going to work in online play. So please, make sure that when you're in practice mode, using the strike recording, that you're having the AI block right after. Next we have our slip counters, and the most successful one tends to be slipping to the lead leg side and people tend to input the cross. Of course you can also slip to the inside and then put a cross, but we're going to go with the outside slip counter first. So we're going to slip our head, take our head off the center line and immediately input the cross. Important that you're not holding block. If you're holding block, it's going to make the counter that much slower. Somebody like Max Holloway, for example, who doesn't have the most power, it's important that maybe you follow up in combination as opposed to just going for one shot. That way you're able to maximize the cardio of the fighter that you're using. Other counters are here too, off of the slips. So let's use somebody like Justin Gaethje, right? Maybe not the strongest cross, but he has a nasty rear uppercut. So we're gonna slip to the inside, left analog stick down, and then input the rear uppercut. See this? This is a very, very solid counter. Another counter that we have available to us is the outside slip lead upper counter. When we're in the same stance, especially slipping against a rear-handed strike, this outside slip lead upper counter is very, very nasty. We can also have it target the body too. You can also go inside slip lead hook, or you can go inside slip rear hook to load up the damage. So, let's have a quick review, right? Inside slip, input the rear uppercut, which is now done with R1 and whatever the punch input is, depending on your rear hand side. You can go outside slip lead upper counter. You can also have these target the body. You can modify these to body shots by holding L2 as you input the strike. Another thing you can do if you're holding the left stick forward when you're inputting head movement, you get a hard slip counter. You do risk getting more vulnerability when you're moving into some of these shots, but if you time it, you can nail somebody clean out. 
right back to the newly added check hook if you hold the left analog stick towards the lead leg as you're inputting your slip you'll continue to pivot and angle off this is very good against opposite stance opponents works just as well against if you guys are in the same stance but opposite stance opponents this check hook is absolutely nasty and any combo that starts with the lead hook you can use it with this check hook so of course we have our good tried and true the uppercut block counters now something a lot of people kind of forgot right depending on where it lands right he's landing on my rear hand with his lead body hook i'm going to input the rear uppercut the rear uppercut counter especially followed up with the left hook is much cleaner it's much more concise if your opponent throws the body hook towards your lead hand the lead uppercut even though the rear uppercut still works the lead uppercut is slightly faster than if you try to go for the rear uppercut but i like the lead uppercut because it doesn't whiff as hard just in case your opponent slips but the rear uppercut into the left hook is still just as good but the block counter is just a little bit faster when you go with the lead uppercut first and of course we have our tried and true the lead hook block counter this is a counter that's available when your opponent lands a hook where your lead leg side is at on the outside of your hand right it lands on the lead leg side of the block pay attention here and you immediately input the lead hook after you successfully block the strike this also applies to overhands so once the opponent lands an overhand on the lead side of our block we are immediately inputting the lead hook it stops them it hits stuns them and we're able to combo this and follow up with an uppercut so that's going to be it for counter striking volume one for ufc 5 in a couple weeks we'll have volume two once we get a little bit of the meta situated i'm gonna have tons more tutorials hopefully you guys appreciate this and this is going to help you guys elevate your game on ufc 5 don't forget to like and subscribe remember 17 i appreciate y'all i'm out of here